Harry Knows Itchy Butt by Elizabeth Frankel and Gary Duncan. Late one afternoon, down in the ground, Harry Knows Wombat woke up with a frown. He stretched and he yawned, rubbed his eyes and scratched his ear. Then a strange sensation came over his rear. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a huff and a splitter, his body said, I really need to scratch my butt. And he couldn't quite reach around with his big hairy nose and his legs were quite short as far as legs goes. Then he had an idea, it was quite plain to see, he could just rub his butt on his favourite scratch tree. It was not far away, just over the next rise, so he hurried on over, but to his surprise... It was gone! His favourite scratch tree had been chopped at the base. There was not one limb left. It was gone from the place. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a half and a splittery splat, he said, I really need to scratch my butt. And then he remembered a little salt bush. He could just go back on up. Give a rub and a push. It was not far away, just over the next rise. So we hurried on over, but to his surprise... It was gone. Not a sign of the salt bush. He looked everywhere. There were just a few sticks and the ground was all bare. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a half and a splitter his blood, he said, I really need to scratch my butt. He recalled a big log, hollow and old. They are perfect for itches and scratching, I'm told. It was not far away, just over the next rise, so he hurried on over, but to his surprise. It was gone! The old log had vanished. It was nowhere to be found. He could see where it once lay, by a dent in the ground. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a half and a splitter, he said, but he said, I really need to scratch my butt. And then he remembered an old Mally stump. That would be perfect to fix up his rump. It was not far away, just over the next rise. So he hurried on over, but to his surprise. It was gone! The hairy nose wombat yelled, What a bad dream! The old Mally stump was nowhere to be seen. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a huff and a splittery butt spot, he said, I really need to scratch my butt. And then he recalled a big limestone boulder. He'd used it before for an itch on his shoulder. It was not far away, just over the next rise, so he hurried on over, but to his surprise. <gasps> it was gone! He just couldn't believe it. The boulder gone too. He cried, what is a hairy nosed wombat to do? I've run about ideas to scratch my rear. I guess I'll go back to my burrow again. His butt was still itchy. He felt tired and alone. So he turned around sadly and headed for home. Over each rise, he stomped back on the double. But when he got home, there was terrible trouble. His burrow was gone. The mound and the burrow where he'd lived all his life were being bulldozed and flattened. This was serious strife. They had come before daybreak. Keen for an early start, helplessly he watched with an ache in his heart. As his home disappeared, he let out a wail. This was so much worse than an itch in his tail. Where would he live? He gazed up at the sky. He lifted his hairy nose and started to cry. But then... Hello, hairy nose wombat. I was just passing by. Why are you so sad and why do you cry? So he told her, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. First, my butt had an itch and it wouldn't go away. Then my scratching things vanished. They just disappeared. One after the other. It was totally weird. I headed on home, got the most awful fright. My burrow was gone and soon it will be light. I have always lived here, but one thing is for sure. There is no way I can stay here anymore. And she replied, don't worry, friend. Please don't be sad. Although I can see why you're feeling so bad. Your home has been ruined. It's no good for you now. 
Come with me to my place and I'll show you how. There are log stumps and bushes and a favourite scratch tree. We'll arrive before sunup. Just follow me. She seemed very kind and her home sounded nice and so he decided to take her advice. It was not far away, just over the next rise. So they hurried on over, but to his a surprise. Oh no! Don't worry, she said. I've done this before. If we're careful and quick, we can make it, I'm sure. They watched and they waited for the traffic to slow. Then came a gap. One, two, three, go! Careful! Quick! She was right. They had made it. Her home looked divine. He felt very safe as they passed by the sign. Harry knows Wombat no longer felt alone. He decided to stay. This would be his new home. She said, This is my burrow. You can sleep in it too. But before his night ended, there was one thing to do. With an itchy, scratchy, grumble and groan, a shudder and shake and a snort and a moan, a grunt and a huff and a splittery splat, he said, I finally get to scratch my butt. The end.